Welcome to Celebrating Act Two with our special guest, John Mariani, the virtual gourmet. Hi, John. Hello, hello. John, great to see you again. Uh, your, your newsletter, free newsletter, by the way, uh, the virtual gourmet at johnmariani.com is a fun read every week. And um, I, it keeps me in touch with the, the greater restaurant scene because you, you talk about restaurants of every stripe and all around the country and all around the world. Um, and I wanted to ask you uh, for your opinion about the restaurant business, because for me, that's entertainment. Go out, go out and have a great meal. Um, restaurant business in the U.S. after COVID. Now, I know it's been, it hasn't been that long after COVID. There's a lot of people still worried about COVID. Um, I'm not, but there's still a lot of people who take precautions. And well, well, in my experience, the, the, we just went out to dinner the other night to uh, Nucci's, one of our favorite Italian restaurants, local family-owned restaurant. So here's what happened with Nucci's. They had to shut down, obviously. And when they opened, they had two dining rooms. They had two storefronts, if you will. And they, they had expanded over the years to a second dining room. So they were very busy. Well, since COVID, they've, the extra dining room has closed they closed it and it's become a, I don't know, a pet grooming store or something like that. So Nucci's is back to its original um, footprint, if you will, in, in, the, um, in the store uh, front, but they're packed. Mm -hmm. uh, we had to wait, which is you know good for them. We didn't have to wait long. They're terrific people and they bring the bread and everything right away, but nevertheless, they're packed. And so oh, here they are at about half their size but doing really well. Tell me about the rest of the industry. Is Are they typical? Uh, I, I don't know if they're typical insofar as closing down half the restaurant, but that is one way of uh, consolidating um, and meeting expenses. But yeah, overall in the United States, the restaurant business is doing very, very well. In many, many cases, uh, better than before COVID. And I, I'm gonna lead out, leave out of this equation fast food joints and so forth. Uh, I will only say that a, a chain out of Dallas, which is called uh, <clears throat> Raising Cane, which my younger son is the regional director for, and they're just starting to open in, in the East. But every time they open a Raising Cane, which you have many out, out in California, every time they open, there is literally a line around the block. Um, it's just could stretch for a quarter of a mile. And uh, even as the the, the celebrity uh, aspect of a new opening dies down, the place is is, is packed, packed, packed. Um, but let's avoid the uh, chain. Let's talk about <clears throat> mid to upper level dining. Uh, yeah. I have um, not seen or perhaps realized uh, in the past pre-COVID how packed <laughs> restaurants can be how difficult it is to get into restaurants without uh, plenty of advance notice. Um, there's a little restaurant up where I live where our friend uh, uh, Joe Dernan's uh, sister, uh, I'm sorry, uh, daughter is uh, the chef up there. And they got uh, notice in the Michelin Guide, um, which I didn't even think covered Westchester. But when that came out, they are now booked two months in advance every single Friday and Saturday. Wow. Good yeah. for them. Two months into that. Um, now, that's because they got the, the Michelin recognition. And if you get, um, you know, if the Los Angeles Times gives your restaurant a good review, of course, that's going to pack them. But I think what COVID did was to make a lot of restaurateurs cognizant of the fact that, well, you know, honey, we were intending to paint, paint the dining room, but we've just been so busy, we haven't gotten around to it. And, you know, we, will, God, we really should replace the uh, the stove and, and the, uh, the, 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 the grease ducts and everything. But we're so busy. We get COVID hits, they're shuttered, and they do it. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, all that, what was it, PPT loans helped enormously. Uh, and <clears throat> excuse me, allowing these people to um, continue at all. So when things and in some cases, this is shock of shocks. Landlords are actually sympathetic for once um, <laughs> in many cases. Uh, they had to work it because the landlords could not just say, "I'm kicking you out. I'm getting somebody else uh, in here who will pay my price." 
and wasn't going to be able to, anybody else to come uh, in. Although after COVID, those places that did close have been filled up. The, those spaces have been filled up um, immediately. Uh, you can hardly find spaces uh, uh, for restaurants uh, in a good location. And remember, location, location, location. Sure. Is important sure. for a restaurant as, as any other uh, uh, business. So what I'm finding is that <clears throat> they are thinking up new and novel ways, even old established restaurants. How can we appear to be better? How can we appear to be new? The, the, the family restaurant that you uh, cited, I don't know, but I have a feeling they put their heads together and said, uh, we've got to really bend over backwards for our old customers. We have to be very friendly to all the new customers. We have to go out of our way to make this not just a going out to eat experience, but a, a place that they want to come back and they like the people, they like the atmosphere. These are all things that restaurants tend to let slide and COVID made them think about it and to change things uh, so that when things did bounce back, um, they were going to have enormous number of people who were regulars who were dying to return. I mean, just couldn't wait to get back to their favorite restaurants as opposed to, uh, not as opposed to, but in addition to those who were newly curious about older restaurants, new restaurants, and, and this is very important, <clears throat> the comeback of travelers from abroad uh, mm. so pent up. Well, first of all, domestic travelers were very pent up. So all those people who wanted to go to New York or go to Disney World were not. And now they, I mean, it's a, just a barrage, just like a dam breaking. Well, that is starting to happen um, from uh, Europeans and um, Europeans and Asians um, uh, all across the board. Uh, so that in any given restaurant on any given night, I would say you're going to find in a city like New York, certainly, probably 20% of the people there are going to be from a foreign country. This really? year, um, yeah. New York, prior to COVID, <clears throat> was averaging about 55 million visitors per year. Astonishing. Um, I think that Las Vegas gets 36, 37 million, which is enormous. Um, wow. Las Vegas is more wax and wane, depending on when um, conventions are coming when. Um, so New York had 55 million before. This year, we expect 64 million foreign visitors to come mm. to New York. Wow. They all got to eat three times a day. <clears throat> and um, the, the one still gray aspect of all this is lunch. Um, well, there are two gray aspects. One is lunch. The business lunch has not bounced back anywhere. Uh, the business, for two reasons, uh, number one of which the workers, the employees may well be working at home, a significant percentage sure. of Sure, oh yeah. Yeah, and secondly, that those who are in the buildings, the allure, the appeal of the business lunch, which is a used to be a very, very big deal in New York, not so much in uh, other cities, uh, Chicago to a certain extent. Los An the tr problem with Los Angeles is uh, that it's impossible to get around. Hey, I'll meet you downtown for lunch. You know, I mean, th that means that you're going to have to drive 45 minutes from Santa Monica to meet me for lunch. Yeah. A city like New York or Chicago or San Francisco, I'll meet you for lunch down on uh, Sullivan Street. And yeah, I'll ca get a cab. I'll be there in 10 minutes. Um, that's an enormous distinction. But yeah, they have not come back. The importance of the business lunch, the three hour, the three hour, three martini lunch is long gone everywhere. Um, the Mad Men era. <clears throat> I have a yeah. one of my editors, uh, former editors at Esquire, and he went out every single day every day for lunch yeah. and you know he'd come in he'd roll in about 10 o'clock in the morning and then at 12 30 he'd go out and he'd come back at three o'clock and that was so schmoozing planning um one editor i had uh, dinner with the other night said that he was a young editor and he joined uh, travel and leisure magazine his uh <clears throat> boss um looked at his expense report and called him into the office and said you're not spending enough part of your job <laughs> is to speak out Perspective, uh, young authors, and uh, and uh, uh, entertain and um, see if we can how we can utilize them. And uh, those days are pretty much gone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, expense accounts uh, in business. I've 
shrunk over the years significantly. And let's face it, um, in Los Angeles, a two-hour lunch isn't that unusual. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're talking about <clears throat> how restaurants have been doing. Uh, kind of interesting uh, where we are. Uh, we have a favorite restaurant, my wife and I, called Dio Siam, which is Asian fare, Chinese, and a few other things. And they never skipped a beat. They had... Uh, uh, not very fancy, but they had uh, a local dining and they had about, uh, it's sort of family owned and there were like three or four locations and you couldn't get them on the phone to order anything. They had a huge takeout before, during COVID, it was even larger, but they always had some outside dining and things like that. And even when you went to pick up your food, it was crowded. So I think um, a lot of it has to do with uh, whether or not they had a decent takeout to begin with. Uh, yeah. uh, take, uh, take to, out, to survive COVID. Uh, Takeout delivery yeah. is, is the cream and the cherry on top. Um, right. Restaurants restaurants that never had even thought of takeout delivery, sure. that, certainly not delivery, uh, in cahoots with those things like Uber, which will deliver it for you. I mean, this, this is a whole new world, and that increases everybody's profits enormously. So uh, I'm not going to cite percentages, yeah. but um, I would say a, a good restaurant, a fine restaurant um, is doing takeout and saying, why did we think of this before? <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that the industry is doing well, because for me, uh, food is entertainment. It's not just going uh, for a good meal. It's really the fun of going out and the ambience of the place and the service and people um, it's an important part of life, I think. So it's thank you. Part of life, and it's not just about the food, um, as you suggested. It's about the atmosphere. It's about seeing other people. It's about a form of entertainment. As I think I said in a prior show uh, when I was in Disney World back in uh, December, that some of their restaurants were booked four months in advance. Mm. Amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Good. Thank you, John. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.